So ironically, after doing such a great job yesterday with the um, 4K, we've moved on, uh, we've gone back to the shitty video of my phone for the convenience because I left the house not thinking I was going to leave the house. Um, so here we are. And what's happening is... I'm really hungry, which is why I'm, there's these long gaps. I'm really hungry, and... I started looking at the places on the list that I still want to go. And one of them is this deli that we're going to right now. That I've passed a zillion times, usually with according to G in the car, it seems to be wherever it is that we go, somehow we pass that. And um, I looked at pictures of their food and I looked at pictures of the food of this other deli that's down the street from it. And I got hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And it's cold and dark and shitty and I didn't want to move my car. And I was like, I was gonna cop out and just go to the taco place across the street. So that's what I started to do, and then when I got there, they were closed, which kind of forced my hand into getting in the car and just going to the deli. And the problem is that the deli that's on the list, the Factors Deli, where we're going, doesn't look half as good as this other deli down the street that I found from it. And so now I'm really, like, internally fighting with myself, like, do I be a completist? and go to the Factors Deli because it's been on the list for a couple of years, or do I go to this other deli that I found that looks better? Now here's the only other part of the problem that I'm obsessing over, which is the other deli that looks better is kosher. And nine times out of 10, the kosher food is really tasteless. But this might be an exception. There are rare exceptions. And this might be an exception because the pictures looked pretty phenomenal um, but I think let's just stick with the plan and go to the original factors deli it's been open since 1948 the family that owns it now has owned it apparently since 1969 and normally you'd think well they must be doing something right but as I've noticed and I've shared with you there's so many places in LA that aren't very good but have stayed in business for so long just because they look good or people like the name or the logo or, you know, they use this filming location so much that they're able to stay in business for decades and decades and decades when the food itself isn't very good. So it's kind of a toss up. I'm also sitting in unnecessary traffic because I can't vlog and use the map at the same time. And I don't know the shortcut to get there. I only know the uh, the traffic way at 514 to get there and I'm hungry. Now that we've sorted out where we're going, do we want pastrami or brisket? Because it's hard for a Jewish deli to fuck up brisket, but it's really easy for a Jewish deli to fuck up pastrami. But pastrami is better most of the time. <sighs> Did I mention I'm hungry? Um, something else I wanted to tell you. I got so much done this morning that by noon I was done with almost everything I needed to do for the day. It's just a very... I feel sort of unmotivated, but not really. I guess disinterested is a better word. I feel very disinterested with a lot of the things I'm seeing and um, struggling to focus a lot. And I keep saying this, I probably said it in a blog the other day, I keep going back to like this time of year 
in like 1992 for reference. It feels just like that all over again. Everything feels the same. Like that, you know, that's, this is how Nirvana hit or 91, 91 or 92, whatever it was, 92, I think. Um, how never mind broke it's it's because there was this level of just stagnant there was nothing happening and when that record came out it was like that was something happening so it, even though it might not necessarily have been the best record you know in time and all that because it was the only thing happening people really just got on it like flies on shit and that's definitely what's happening again now And I guess if I was smart, and I'm just talking this out with you, I'd be looking for that kind of stuff bubbling under the surface, as opposed to looking for, I keep looking for what would be the best way to go back, if you could go back in time and know that this is the period of time, this is what's going to happen, more or less, pretend you have unlimited resources, what would be the best way to handle that period of time, right? And I came up with this idea the other day, which was just to get sunglasses. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I think that the right way to handle a time like this, like when I leave the house now, it's not like when I left the house six months ago. Six months ago when I left the house, whatever was normal. At a time like this, when you leave the house, you need to be prepared that just anything's going to happen, right? Homeless person's going to jump you, car's going to flip, the nuclear bomb's going to go off, like, it just anything, because that's the kind of time it is right now. And I thought, well, if that's the case, the best thing you could do is have some sort of protection, which would be really big sunglasses. Um... That's that's not literal. That's, but at the same time, it, you do get the sunglasses. Um, so I went shopping for sunglasses for like two hours one day, online, and I just found sort of big ridiculous sunglasses. Because when you deal, it, let me talk that out and then explain it more. If you're gonna deal with crazy people, See, crazy people aren't funny to watch or interesting to watch. They're really not. What's fun and interesting to watch is a sane person reacting to a crazy person. That's what's fun and interesting to watch. And so a crazy person oftentimes is trying to provoke, trying to get that reaction out of you. And you have to be naturally more ridiculous and crazier than the crazy person without outwardly expressing it. You can't have a crazy person come at you on the street and be like, blah, 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 blah. And then you just sort of rip off your shirt and go, blah, 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 blah. Because that amps them up. But if you have this sort of wall of defense that's really ridiculous. It can't be Ray-Ban Wayfarers. It's got to be like, you know, just something outer space kind of shit. That homeless person or the crazy person or whatever we're talking about will very quickly realize, no matter how crazy they are, they will very quickly realize that they're not going to get a reaction out of you, that it is impossible, and that whatever image you're presenting to them is so far removed from their reality that they might as well just give up now. And that's kind of the best thing to do at a time like this. Not just with crazy people on the street, right? With anything, with dealing with um, the news from China or Ukraine or dealing with crazy relative or dealing with work problem or dealing with just anything, just anything. Somebody fighting with you on the internet, so you know, anything you're dealing with, people are so amped up over nothing. And and the reality is people are amped up over nothing because they're bored, because there's nothing happening. 
That's that's really what it comes down to. There's just culturally, there's just nothing happening right now. And so people are bored and, and this is how they immaturely take it out. So with that in mind, it's best to find that kind of defense, whatever your situation is. For me personally, the main thing I do is I go out and vlog or you know, go to show, go to restaurant, whatever. So I'm gonna encounter crazy people on the street more than anything. Sunglasses what works for me. But your life is probably very different, or maybe not that different, and you need a different kind of ridiculous defense at a time like this. I can't tell you what that is because I don't know what your situation is, but um, yeah. But you kind of just got to do that. It changes in the summer. That much I know. It always changes in the summer. But that, when you get a bad season change, like the one right now, and the combination of economic instability, whole world coming to an end, you know, everybody amped up and nothing happening. See, that's... If there was some hit, in the old days, if there was some hit TV show that everybody watched and talked about at school or work on Monday, that would be the unifying thing that brought people together to help even this out a little bit. But there's nothing. There's literally nothing is unifying anymore. Uh, so the only thing that is unifying is that there's nothing happening. But most people don't have the emotional, mental, physical capacity to express that they're bored. Well, better find yourself some sunglasses or something. It's very, I know it's very Parliament Funkadelic, but. It's a similar philosophy, I suppose. Um, so, yeah. That's a lot of what I've been really looking at in between working on stuff is just how to sort of protect myself from, from what's happening right now. I spent, after I finished this stuff at around noon, I had some lunch. I sat in bed for a long time just listening to classical music and I wasn't bored when I was younger I would have been so bored I would have been like angry bored frustrated that I was bored and now I was so thankful that I was not having to deal with any kind of drama I, that I was not having to deal with any amped up people who were bored and trying to take it out on me like, I could not have felt any luckier to have the luxury of just two, three hours sitting, listening to classical music uh, uninterrupted with no problems. That was really a nice luxury today. I wasn't, you know, worried about anybody bombing my house. I wasn't worried about... Uh, anything really it was very nice I don't know what Pico looks like I know it's south of Olympic but I'm not sure how many streets so we'll have to pay a little bit more attention than usual I'm gonna show you the street and then I'm gonna turn the camera off and then when we get to the deli, or at least near the deli, we'll pick it up from there. I'm not going to make a decision on the pastrami or brisket until I see it. But you, you have some time to figure it out, what you're going to get. Okay, let's hop back.
Okay, there it is. Factor's famous deli. So famous that when I moved here, nobody ever told me about it. I never heard of it. Except for driving on the street. And one day thinking, hey, I should really check that out. Let's see what they got. Okay, so everything checks out. Pickles are okay. They're LA good. They're not New York good. This smells incredible. They got the Dr. Browns. One thing I found really weird and interesting about the place is like, this is over by the bathroom in a hallway, just kind of covered in dust. And you see like autographs like this in restaurants, but not original John Wayne, Gregory Peck, Henry Fonda, like all crazy rare original of uh, uh, being there one sheet from a video release and down here is an original French one sheet of North by Northwest. Almost everything is signed. Really just surreal. I got the uh, the cherry drop cookies as usual. I gotta tell you, this is the place. Like, yeah, Cantor's, we all know it's, it's the comforting interior and the people, but the food is just like passable. This place is great. Um, it's out of the way and everything, but man, this, this is the place. This is the real place. Right here, Factor Famous. That was so good. I'm going to eat my cookies in the car and drive home and go to sleep, but I just, it's another example of like when you move here, people tell you go all these places and they're all the wrong places. It never changes. It doesn't matter what city you live in. People are just boring and awful <laughs> and never leave their comfort zone. Never see any of the good stuff. God, that place was good. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.